time being, all services will be held online. The Regenerated Church will be on Facebook Live every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. For those of you who don't have a Facebook but would like to join us, you can watch us on our YouTube channel. The link to our channel is in our Instagram bio. You can click that or just go straight to YouTube and type in The Regenerated Church. Make sure to subscribe so you can watch our full-length services. We are used to giving cash or using credit cards to give our tithes and offerings, but now we can use our cell phones with an app called Giveify. Just search up the name Christ Center and with a few quick and easy steps, you'll be able to donate to our ministry. You can also give directly on our website at ccenter.org where you can sell through PayPal. Here at the Regenerated Church, we like to stay connected with you. So if you have an Instagram or a Facebook, follow us at the Regenerated Church. Here you'll find great photos, short clips, and even updates on what's going on in our ministry. This concludes our announcements for this week. And as always, we'll we like see, see you at, at the, the center. center. This is the day that the Lord has made, one of which we will rejoice and be glad in it. So glad to have each and every one of you who have decided to join us for Wednesdays in the Word here at the Regenerated Church. To all of my Regenerated members and my family, I want you to know that me and Lady Glow are in consistent and constant prayer for you. Praying that God has continued to be faithful as he always has been to cover you and to keep you and put a head of protection around about you as he sees us through this pandemic. To all of our friends and family and guests that are not members of our church, we are so honored that you have chosen to be with the Regenerated Church on this Wednesday night. There are so many different ministries, so many different feeds, so many different platforms that you could visit. And the fact that you decided to be with us, we count it not slack. We count it as a privilege. And so we want to Welcome you uh, to Wednesdays in the Word. Do me a favor, Regenerated members. Please push the like button, put a comment, but most important, push the share button. Said often uh, to someone recently that if you could push a button that might change somebody's life, would you push it? If you could push a button that would uh, encourage somebody's heart, would you push it? Uh, their answer very quickly was yes. Well, I truly do believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ is a message that will change somebody's life. And as we preach it, and as we teach it, and as we sing it and declare it from the Regenerated Church, by you pushing that share button, that is the easiest evangelistic tool that you have to share to your friends the great and awesome hope and that we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, if you could be so kind to give me just a moment of pause uh, on this Wednesday, the last few weeks that we have aired conversations that I've had with my brothers and sisters in Christ, and there are uh, some more to come. Uh, but this week, if I can call a pastoral uh, mulligan, uh, I want to go back and dig a little deeper into the word that the Lord gave me on Sunday morning, the pandemic package uh, that's found in the book of Genesis chapter 41. So grab your Bibles real quick and join me in the book of Genesis, the 41st chapter. Now, the backdrop is the fact that God has sent a dream to Pharaoh. Pharaoh is the prime minister. He is the president of the nation of Egypt. And this nation uh, has been led by Pharaoh, and Pharaoh has been troubled by this dream. He has called all of his magicians. He has called his uh, astrologers. He has called all his soothsayers, and none of them can help him with the interpretation of the dream. And one of his officials remembers that there is a young Hebrew boy down in cell block number 12 that has the ability to interpret dreams. Joseph is plucked and grabbed, and after he shaves his face, and after the text says he changes his clothes, he comes in and he hears the dream of Pharaoh and then he does what only Joseph could do with the help and the assistance of Almighty God. Joseph begins to prophesy or foretell of what the dream is. Joseph uh, first deals with what I call leader first. Everybody say leader first. One more time, say leader first. In, in verse 25 of Genesis chapter 41, he says, And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he is 
about to do. He's showed Pharaoh what he's about to do. Now notice that God could have showed the dream to anybody. God could have shared the vision with anybody, but God, when he's getting ready to do something monumental, God always starts leader first. Why is that, Pastor White? Because in the midst of a crisis, one of the main components that must be in place is our leaders, must must be our leaders. When, when all trouble breaks out, the people are programmed to look to their pastor, to look to their governor, to look to their mayor, to look to their senators, and yes, to look to their president. Notice when God is doing a major move or in the midst of this foretold pandemic, the first person that is alerted is the leader. There are some times in which I'm not glad to live in California. The uh, the mortgages are high. The, the gas is high. The food is high. The taxes are high. But I can tell you for the last couple of weeks, I am glad that I live in California because my governor, Gav Governor Newsom, and my mayor, Mayor Garcetti, has showed me the power of good leadership in the midst of a pandemic. They've shut down stuff that I didn't want them to shut down. They've closed stuff and they've demanded that we walk around in math simply because God will honor his people with giving them good leaders. Some states ain't as lucky as my state. Some, come on y'all, some, some, some territories ain't as lucky as my territory. And there is another house. There's another guy that we see uh, that, 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 that the problem has been his, his leadership during this time. And I want you to know that whenever there is a problem or a situation, God always calls leaders first. Well, well Pastor White, what does that have to do with me? Uh, I, I'm not a politician. I'm not, I'm not a president. I'm not a pharaoh, but you are a parent. Uh, you are a pastor. And God is looking to you. Your family is looking to you. Your community, the people on your job are looking to you. Because whenever there is a pandemic, God doesn't start off with the followers. God always starts with the leader first. And so notice God shares this dream and he does not share this with the people. He shares it with Pharaoh. Not only does God show leader first, but God also shows what I call favor first. For the Bible tells us in verse 26 that the good kind or the seven good cows are seven years and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. So in verse 26, he tells them that Pharaoh, you've had two dreams, but really those dreams are one. What you have seen is seven good cows and you have seen, seen seven good ears of corn and those seven cows and that seven corn, corn represent the favor of God. But, but not only verse 26 talks about the favor, but verse 27 will talk about the famine. For in verse 27, he says, and the seven thin and ill favored kind, or that's cow, that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty ears, blasted with the east wind, shall be seven years of famine. Verse 26, God's going to send favor. Verse 27, God is going to send a famine. But I love my God, because even though he's going to send favor and famine, God is going to send favor first. Somebody, if you don't mind, just type in favor first. Faith, that's the kind of God we serve. He's going to give us favor and famine. He's going to reign on the just and the unjust. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the kind of God I serve is the kind of God that he is so good to us, he always starts off with favor first. I, I want you to know that's what God does every day. When he gives you another day, you didn't have no bad day. You had a bad moment. You had a bad hour because every day when God wakes you up and your eyes open and the sun shines through and wakes you up, that's favor first. Somebody shout one more time. Favor first, favor first. God says, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to start off with the hard years and have you to work through the hard years. God says, I love my people so much. I'm going to start off with favor first. Joseph prophesied 
something that's really not a prophecy. He says, Pharaoh, there's going to be some good days and there's going to be some bad days. One, one more time, there's going to be good days and they're also going to be bad days. Now, I, I, I got to bust some, somebody else's bubble because uh, the preaching has kind of changed. The preaching always tells you that, that, that you're going up. Preaching always tells you now that you're going from a from a bins to a, from a from a bucket, excuse me, to a bins. Preaching now tells you you're gonna go from McDonald's to a Mercedes. You 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 going up. Now, not only has the preaching changed, but 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 the singing has changed. It's your your season. It's your time. God is getting ready to bless you. And what we have done is we have given uh, Twinkies to Christians, and so now we got folks that are filled on junk food. And so we believe that life is always gonna be good. But I, I gotta let you know that life is not always gonna be good. You're gonna have some years of favor, and then you're gonna have some years of famine. Uh, people see me and my wife uh, that's been married for 27 years and they say, oh my God, y'all sure look good. Y'all look like y'all. I would love to be a couple like y'all, but can I let y'all in on the secret? All 27 of them years ain't been favor years. There have been some favor years. Help me marry folks. And there's been some famine years. People see my two children and they are great jewels, gifts from God, Asia and Ben. They say, oh, you got great kids. And yes, I do got great kids. But uh, in them 20 some years, all them years ain't been favored. There has been favor and there's been some years that has been there's been some years of famine, but 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 Paul Jones said it this way that when I'm counting my days, my good days, y'all y'all know the rest of that song, outweigh my bad days, and I won't, I won't complain. So God says that even though you're gonna get favor and famine, I love you enough to send the favor first. One more time, somebody shout favor first. Uh, the, the reason why God gotta send the favor first. Is because oftentimes that when famine comes, favor is forgotten. That favor comes, when favor comes, fam, when famine comes, excuse me, favor is often forgotten. Verse 26, 28 says, this is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh, what God is about to do. He showeth unto favor to Pharaoh, excuse me, for behold, there shall come seven years of great plenty throughout the land of Egypt and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all of the plenty, you see it, shall be forgotten. So God is going to give us the same amount of years, seven years of famine, seven years of favor, but the famine is going to be so bad in the minds and the heart of the people that the favor that God has sent is going to be forgotten about. Have you ever been with somebody who, who seems to always forget your favor, but they can only remember your famine. Uh, you, you treated them well, you treated them kind, you gave them money, you picked them up, uh, but you did one thing wrong. Come on, I can think of a few folks in my life. You, you told them how beautiful and wonderful they are, how sweet and kind they were, but you said one thing wrong and all of your favor got forgotten. Joseph said that the famine is going to seem or feel so bad in the minds and the hearts of the people that the favor that God sent early is going to be forgotten. Oh, but but you, you got to remember in the midst of your trials and your tribulations that the God that we serve, not only does he send favor, but our God is faithful. So leader first, favor first, but then we see that the favor has been forgotten. And then Joseph tells Pharaoh that the dream has doubled because this is something that has been finalized that God is going to do. But here is the part in which I really uh, begin to love Joseph because Joseph is not just a person who can prophesy a pandemic. Joseph helps us to prepare 
for the pandemic. Prepare for the pandemic. If you don't mind, come on, comment one more time. I'm prepared. I'm prepared for this. Come on. Come on. If you know it, regenerated, you know God told us a couple of months ago that we were going to need a miracle in this season. Come on, type in, we prepared for this. Come on, we begin to seek God in January that God would do a new thing in us, that we God begin to condition us in prayer and fasting. Come on, one more person. Come on, type in. Come on, I need about two more people to type in. We're prepared for this. We are prepared for this. And Joseph moves from predicting the famine, which anybody can do, and Joseph teaches the people and Pharaoh how to be prepared for it. Now, this is where Joseph flips the script because Joseph gives them what I called a non-miracle miracle. J Joseph predicts or Joseph prepares them for what I would like to call a non-miracle miracle because Joseph says that the answer for the famine is that we're going to save money. You didn't hear that. No, no. God said, hallelujah, glory to God, we're going to save money. Now, now, this is the same God that fed people with manna. This is the same God that hit a rock and water came out. This is the same God that sent a raven to feed a prophet. But notice God doesn't do none of the miraculous, spooky Christian stuff that we are normally preaching about, God says that the answer to your famine is to save money. This is what I call a non-miracle miracle. And oftentimes in the body of Christ, it's more easy for us to preach these great and awesome mysteries in which the Lord swept in right on time and he turned it around. But God said, I ain't gonna do that this time. In order for us to do it, I want you to write this down, that God gives us practical principles for living. That sometimes you, if you, if you operate in the non-miracle miracle, you won't need a miracle. Can I say that one more time so you can get it? That if you learn practical principles for living, if you will learn how to operate in what I call the non-miracle miracle, you won't need a miracle because I've told, as I've told the regenerated church, it seems as if that sometimes the same people always need a miracle. Some, some folks always need financial miracles. There are some people, come on y'all, who always need God to work something out on their job. But maybe, just maybe, if you would operate in the normal practical principles of life, you might not need so many Miracles. I am prone. I am prone. Y'all pray for me. I am prone to get to something late. Y'all, regenerated members, y'all know, stretch your, stretch your hand towards and say, Lord, touch the pastor, touch the pastor, touch the pastor. And I've noticed that whenever I'm driving and I've left late to get to something and I know I'm going to be late, I'm driving fast. And what I need is I need miracles. So I need it to be no traffic. I need it to be no train. I need, I need you know, no slow drivers. I need all the lights to turn in my favor. But maybe if I would have just left 10 more minutes early and done the non-miracle miracles, I wouldn't at the end needed a miracle. And Joseph tells Pharaoh this ultra unsexy, ungodless thing. Joseph says that the answer is... We're going to save money. So Joseph says what we said on Sunday. Joseph says that while things are on the top, come on, we're going to live like we're on the bottom. So that when we're on the bottom, this bless my soul on Sunday, we can live like we're on top. One more time. Joseph says while everybody else is going out to eat, we're going to cook and stay at home. Because why? We're trying to... We're trying to save money. Joseph says, while everybody else is getting brand new houses, while everybody else is going shopping, while everybody else is getting brand new uh, red bottoms and itchy amaratas and Gordon Gortrells, Joseph says, because we know that the favor ain't going to last forever, here is the non-miracle miracle. We're going to save money. We're going we gonna to save, uh, we save money. We're going to save money. No. Nah, Y'all, we, we would love to go on vacation, but we're going we, we gonna to save money. Yeah, I know it's 50% off, 
But 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 we know that the famine is coming and we're going to save money. Joseph tells in verse 33 and verse 34, he says, Now therefore let Pharaoh look out and find a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt and let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land to take up the fifth part of the land in Egypt in the seven, you see it, plenteous years. So the time to save is not in the pandemic. The time to save is before the pandemic. The time to look for an umbrella, come on, y'all, is not when it starts raining. The time to look for a mask is not when the pandemic breaks out. But Joseph says that with wisdom comes this, the fact that I save in the years of plenty, come on, y'all, that I might not starve in the years of famine. And can I tell you that God wants some of the body of Christ to move. It's all right to ask God for a miracle. It's all right to ask God to do the wonders. It's all right to ask God to wipe in and God to swoop in. But sometimes God wants you to practice practical living principles with non-miracle miracles so that you won't need a miracle. Love my mama. She's in heaven. She's resting with God. But my mama could take a prescription that the doctor gave her, and she was faithful to take them prescriptions. She was faithful to stand in every healing line, but I couldn't get my mama to exercise. Couldn't get my mama to eat baked chicken. I couldn't get my mama to eat vegetables. She, she believed God for healing, but maybe, just maybe, love your mama, but she might not have needed as much healing if she just would have walked in exercising her health. And what God wants to teach us is that before the pandemic comes, live your life by basic God-given principles. I hope this is blessing y'all on the night the way it's blessing me. That when the famine comes, you're going to be, you're going to be all right. I'm moving because I, I feel y'all ain't want to hear this on the night. Uh, but but there are some members of my church I know uh, that they probably got laid off and they got furloughed. But I, I saw how they acted before the pandemic. I saw how they acted when both of them were working. They were faithful to give and they probably drove a car less than the car that they probably could have drive. They probably lived in a house and they could have pushed the envelope a little bit more. And so now that this pandemic is going on and they're not working, I know that, that, that this thing can't go on forever, but I know by faith, according to what I've seen in their life, that they are not only prophesying about the pandemic, but they are prepared. They are prepared for the pandemic. And Joseph says that what we're going to do is we're going to save. And if we save during the years of favor, God is going to sustain us during the time of famine. We, they, they, he, he prepares, he prophesies, excuse me, about the pandemic. He prepares for the pandemic because last but not least, God wants us to profit during. Now, when I say profit during, don't hear the word profit from the pandemic, but what God wants us to do is God wants us to profit during the pandemic. Here is that verse. That's verse number 36 says, and the food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not that the land perish not. You say, pastor, that don't say profit. Well, if everybody else is perishing and you not perishing, that's profit. If everybody else is falling and you're still standing, guess what? You are profiting. And Joseph says to Pharaoh that what I want you to do is I want you to save this money that when the famine comes while everybody else is perishing, you're going to profit. While everybody else is elbowing and and cutting and stealing toilet tissue and sanitizers because you have prepared for the pandemic before the pandemic, you won't perish, but you're going to profit. You're going to profit. Um, I, I said on Sunday, as I'll, I'll say it again, that probably uh, before uh, the smoke even cleared on uh, that fateful day, I'll always remember it because it was January 26th. Uh, it was on the birthday of my uh, beautiful wife um, when Kobe uh, Bryant's uh, helicopter tragically went down and his daughter and those that were with him. It, it broke my heart because before you could even uh, process your grief, people were profiting from it by 
selling T-shirts. That's what I call profiting from the pandemic. Uh, you go up and down each and every corner, folks are selling masks. Y'all, you, you read on the news, you saw on the news, this person who had hoarded all of the wipes. He had taken uh, all of the diapers, all the toilet tissue, and he had hogged them and he had marked them up almost 200%. That's somebody that's profiting, taking advantage of people uh, for the pandemic. But that's not that's not what God is talking about. What God is talking about is wisdom. He's talking about the man who builds his house. Come on, y'all, up on the rock that when the rain comes, when everybody else's house is falling, that this house is standing. I, I'm almost done, but y'all remember that uh, the the tale, the three the three pigs. Y'all remember the three pigs. Uh, one, one person built his house with straw. I think another one uh, built his house with hay. Uh, and the third one, he built his house with bricks. Built his house with bricks. He built his house with bricks. And the big bad wolf came and he says, I'm going to huff and I'm going to puff and I'm going to blow your house down. You know, he went from one house to the other and he blew their house down. But the house that had been built with bricks... No matter how much he huffed, no matter how much he puffed, the house couldn't blow down. And when your house is built upon the word of God, the principles of God, the wisdom of God, the preparation of God, I don't care what comes your way, it's not going to blow your house down. You know what Psalms 91 says, that a thousand shall fall out thy side and 10,000 out thy right hand, but it shall not come near your dwelling. In other words, you ain't going to perish, but you're going to profit. I, I, I'm rushing on to my conclusion, uh, but one of my favorite chapters, it's just flat out one of my favorite chapters in the Bible is Genesis chapter 47. For Genesis chapter 47, Joseph not trying to pirate the people, not trying to pimp the people, but just because he's been prepared, the Bible tells us that Joseph, not only Joseph, but Pharaoh and the land of Egypt they profit from this pandemic. Uh, look, if you would, with me at verse number 13. Genesis chapter 47, verse number 13 says, And there is no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. Verse 14 says, And Joseph gathered up all the money that he found in the land of Egypt and all in the land of Canaan, for the corn in which they brought, and Joseph brought the money unto Pharaoh's house. So the first thing that he profits for Pharaoh because he's prepared for this pandemic, he gives Pharaoh all the money for the corn that he has. Then the Bible says, and when the money fell in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came, y'all remember leader first, came to Joseph and said, give us bread. For why should we die in thy presence for the money feather? And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give your cow, I will give you for your cattle if money fail. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange. Y'all see this for horses, for flocks, for cattle, for herds, and for asses. And he fed them with bread. Can I tell you uh, that there's going to be some sales? There's going to be some houses that's going to be marked down. There's going to be some, y'all are going to get a whole bunch of clothes, but there's going to be some, there's going to be some opportunities for those who are prepared. And so we serve a great and awesome God that is worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Why? Because he alerts our leaders first. He gives us favor first. He prophesies about the pandemic, that we might prepare for the pandemic, that ultimately we might profit during the pandemic. How do we do that? Simply by applying natural, practical principles for living. And so my encouragement on you tonight is to take courage and to take strength, um, because the God that we serve has not left us without a witness. The Lord did not lead me. No, he didn't tell me that the coronavirus was coming, but he did alert my spirit that it was time for us to go for warfare. So um, this is different than uh, 2008. 2008, if I can tell you that testimony, I almost lost my house. I lost my job. There were so many things that went on. Um, but this time, I, 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 I sense God telling me I'm, I'm prepared. Uh, I'm prepared for this. I'm prepared for this. And I believe 
but he has not brought me or you this far to leave us. If you will bow your heads in a word of prayer, gracious Father, we do thank you and we do praise you and we do magnify you. And not because that we have to go through the storm, but because we go through the storm with you in the storm. And you have told us that you will never leave us nor forsake us, that you'll be with us always, even until the end of the age. We praise you and we magnify you for your presence that has alerted us and prophesied to us what is coming, that has prepared us for that it is that we're going through, that ultimately we will come out better than what we were before. We give your name, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, thank God. Amen.